Most phones and tablets come with some sort of uh, image editing software. It's usually fairly basic. It will allow you to adjust the tones to some extent, uh, crop uh, and maybe straighten um, pictures, which is a bit of an angle. Uh, however, if you want to take it any further than that, I would recommend that you use an app called Snapseed. Snapseed is made by Google and is completely free of charge given that you've probably already sold your soul to Google in the first place. I would also recommend, if you're not using it, to get hold of Google Photos because the two work together extremely well. Google Photos is another free app which backs up all your pictures to the cloud. Uh, if you're using um, an Apple product, then you may well be using iCloud. And there's no reason why you shouldn't install uh, Google Photos as well. It's an extra line of defense. And as I say, it works extremely well with Snapseed. You get Snapseed from your usual App Store or Play Store and just install it on your phone. Here it is. Let's click on it. And as you can see, it says tap anywhere to open a photo. So if we tap anywhere here, it takes us to gallery, which is what Android calls the place it stores photographs. And uh, if we're lucky, it takes us to our recent photos. If we click up here, we could see we can have images, recent downloads, the SD card, and all the way down to uh, Google Photos. If it's a recent image, then that's not so bad. But if it's uh, one that you took ages ago, it can be a bit of a search trying to find out uh, where the photo is that you want to look at. So there is a, an easier way of, uh, of doing that. We either go into gallery and uh, find the picture we're looking for by checking on albums. Or, alternatively, we can go, go into uh, Google Photos. And again, if we put our photos into albums, we can find that. As you can see, there's one here called the uh, Snapseed Demo. And uh, open a picture from there, such as this. We click on that and if we look down here to the share button we can click on that and we can see Snapseed and it's exactly the same in the gallery app now if you're using an iPhone this doesn't work from the photos app but it does still work from the Google photos app once the picture has opened up in Snapseed you can view it either in portrait format like this or in landscape format. So we have the share icon. We have this icon here, which I'll discuss later. This gives us the settings, tutorials, help and feedback. And down here, we've got a series of filters which you can use to improve your picture. And these are particularly useful for people are inexperienced in, in, in photo editing and don't know what they need to do to make things better. For example, this is what we started with. And something like this is probably significantly better than what we started with. But that's for, uh, not for people like us, that's for people who, who like to take an easy life. For the rest of us, we want to look at the tools and if we click on this we can see that we have got a whole pile of tools here. Uh, I'm not going to look at all of them in, in this tutorial but I'll look at a few and the first one we tend to go to is tune image. Now the problem with this picture, there are a number of problems with this picture not least of which is the fact that the tones are pretty awful, uh, it's overexposed and it needs a little bit of a tweak. We'll see at the top we've got brightness and nothing else showing. Now we can bring up all the elements of, uh, of tune image by clicking on this here, which will show us all of them, but they get in the way of the picture. So we can get rid of that. And we can 
with our finger we can press and move up and down and they, they appear. Now in this case as I say uh, it's a little bit overexposed and lacking in contrast so what we can do is make the, the shadows a little bit darker that looks quite reasonable and in fact very little else is needed to do that. Now what else is wrong with this picture? Once we've done that we need to look down here if we don't like what, we, what we've done we can click the X and if we uh, do like it we can click the tick and this is where we hand it over to the computer to do automatically. So we'll click the tick to accept all that. Now that building is sloping a little bit and we would be a good idea to try and sort of straighten it up a little bit. So if we click on tools again and we can see perspective. Click on that and if we go for the free, ver the free version this allows us to move in any direction. These others uh, move in specific directions and we can pull that corner out a little bit, straighten it up. That's, that's not bad, that's not bad. Perhaps pull that one that way a touch. Yeah, that's a big improvement, so we'll click on that. Now what else have we got? Well, we've got an awful lot of rubbish around the place. The easiest way to get rid of this is to crop it. So we'll go into Tools, Crop. And now we've got a number of choices in terms of uh, the shape of the crop. For, my, for this one, we'll just use the free crop, which means we can uh, put it any shape we want. And we'll just pull that in a little bit. There we go, and we'll pull that one in a little bit. And we might pull the sky down a little bit as well, because it's not doing a lot. There we go, and perhaps the bottom up a little bit as well. There we go, let's click on that. So now we've adjusted the tones, and we've cropped the image to make it uh, concentrate more on what, what it is that we wanted to see. And uh, there's not much else that he's doing. There's these things here, these, uh, don't know what they are, but what you could do is get rid of those. So let's zoom in a little bit. You can do this by pinching and moving your fingers apart and then you get that little blue square which is a bit like uh, Navigator in, in Photoshop. And you can pull that across to one side and there we are. Now we can see those, those things there. So we'll go back to Tools and now we'll go for the Healing Brush. We've got the Healing Brush and we can just click on there, drag it down. It's very like the healing brush in, in, in Photoshop. And double click the picture to go back to where we are. So there, we've taken a little bit of basic photo editing. We've taken a picture with a few problems, I better accept that. And we've, uh, we've tweaked the, uh, the tones, straightened up uh, a leading building, cropped, the image and we have got rid of a little bit of rubbish on the left hand side using the uh, using the healing brush. So that's been a basic photo editing. We've all done it before many many times and if that's all that Snapseed would do I wouldn't particularly be recommending it but it's quite good at doing that. Now just get rid of this one and then we'll, we'll open up another one. But next of all we're going to have a look at this picture. So I click on it Go down to the share button and because I've got my phone in landscape uh, the snap seed icon doesn't immediately uh, pop up so we have to go over here to next click on that and there's snap seed down there click on snap seed and bingo it's arrived. Now because we have the picture in landscape mode, it, it's, the layout is slightly different. We've got the uh, filters here and instead of a word tools, we've actually got a, a pencil but it's the same, does the same job. And this is the one to get rid of these, uh, these filters if we don't want them. So if I click on that, they'll disappear. We've got a bit more space. So we'll click on tools and the obvious thing to do here is to try and straighten that uh, sloping horizon. Now we can do various things with the straighten tool here. We can um, we can drag the thing like that to get it straight. Uh, we can rotate it various ways if we wish. Uh, we can even flip it left to right if we want. But we'll settle for that which uh, has got a nice straight horizon and we'll click the tick to say yep that'll do to our tools and we'll go to tune image again and uh, we'll 
move our finger up and down and we're going to darken those shadows a bit. We've got basically a silhouette here, so uh, we'll darken those shadows. So I click on that and then I move my finger left to darken the shadows. That makes it even more like a night scene. So we'll accept that. And now we're going to try and crop it. So we'll go into the crop tool. Again, I'm going to go for the free, uh, free shape. Uh, if we click in the image, it gets rid of those. We can pull that in to there and move the bottom up a little bit to get rid of these bits at the base. And that's, that's quite good. Now, I said we'd turn it into a night scene. We want to add a moon in this area. So we need to go back into tools. And if we look down here, we will see double exposure. <clears throat> Click on that and we get this screen. And down here is where we click to add another photograph. So if we click on that, it'll take us to our photos. And at this point, you'll begin to wish that you've made a note of when you took the photo that you want to add. So we'll click on here and we'll actually go to Google Photos, which again, it just makes it easier than uh, with the normal app. Uh, click on Photos and I know that the picture I want, I took in April. So we scroll down to get it. Here we are, and uh, that's the one we're going to use. And you'll see that it's been added. However, it's not finished there. If we like, we can move this moon wherever we want because it is actually on another layer. We can also resize it by pinching the picture with, our, with two fingers. Something like that. Now if we come down here, we'll see two other icons. This is a transparency one, which we'll look at in a minute. But this one is our blending modes. Those who are familiar with Photoshop will know that every layer has a blending mode. And this is a default one. And we can work our way through and see which one we prefer. There's lighten, darken, add, subtract, and overlay. And in this case, I think add is the one that we want to use. And we can alter the relationship between the two with this uh, transparency slider. So we can go that way so that the moon disappears, or we can go this way so the moon darkens down the rest of the image. So we could try to get a nice balance. Well, that looks pretty good to me, and I think we can safely leave it at that. Now this picture poses um, a different set of problems. We've got an extreme contrast, very bright area here, very dark area there. But we'll start off by looking at tune image. And we will look at the shadows. And brighten those a little bit. That helps. But we've still got this area a little bit too dark and that area a little bit too dark. So we'll go back into our tools and we'll take this selective. And we'll start up here and I'll click there. And that says brightness. We've got the choice of brightness, contrast, saturation and structure. Well, for this case, it's brightness I'm interested in. Now, if we now pinch the picture with our fingers, we can see the red, which is the area that the, uh, the circle is the area of the brush and the red is the area of covered. And you, you can see that there's a certain amount of masking involved. You put it into the darkest area and it selects the darkest, uh, darkest pixels in that area. So now we can just do this again, this way we did it before, and it's just that area in the right hand side which has been lightened. Pretty good. 
Now we can click plus again here and add another one there. And again, if we pinch, we can see the area that's going to be affected. That's nice. And we'll just lighten it there in the same way. And you can see, I think, that that's produced quite a difference. And we'll tick that. So that's the selective brush. We will just revert that so you can see what we started with. So that's what we started with. As you can see, it's made a significant difference to that particular image. Stained glass windows in churches are really quite tricky things to photograph. The best way to do it is uh, from as far away as possible with a telephoto lens and a camera on a tripod and expose for the brightest part of the image. But if you try taking it with a phone, uh, you get something looking a bit like this. So let's see if we can improve things. If we go into tools and we go into perspective, and the free one again. Now we can start sorting out some of that distortion up there. And as you can see, we've now straightened it up quite a lot. But we've ended up with a short fat window. So if we just click at the top and pull it up, we can stretch it up a little bit. It's more like it. We're still a little bit crooked there. Pull that down a fraction. Yeah, that's nice and straight. So we will accept that. We've got it a little bit straighter. We can have a look at our tune image and we can try and lighten those shadows a little bit. We don't want to go too far, but that looks about right, doesn't it? And what about the highlights? Let's darken them a little tiny bit. There we go. Click on that. Now you can see we've still got quite a lot of distortion down here, but my, it's my intention to get rid of that. So if we go into the crop tool, use the free setting again now we can just pull that up to somewhere near the bottom of the window pull the top down a fraction pull that across there we are and i think we could just one final little tweak on this one if we go into details structure and just pull it across to the right a bit it just makes it a little bit more punchy so there we go, we can sort of zoom in on that. And I think we've uh, done a reasonable job. And I think you'd agree that uh, that's uh, brought about quite a big improvement in that image. We just go back and see what we started with. Quite a change. This is a little church I photographed in Norway. And I thought it might look um, improved if I did it in uh, monochrome. But first of all, we'll just sort of uh, straighten it up. It's, as you can see, it did that automatically, and I'm quite happy to accept what it did. Now then, if we go in and get the crop tool, again, we'll use the free one for this. Take some of that untidiness off the bottom. Uh, I think we could lose some of those people. Now I'll leave that. I'll leave the people in. Uh, that'll do for that. Okay. Now turn it into monochrome. We're going to again go into our tools, and if we look down here, we will see black and white. But I, before I do that, what I like to do is first of all go to tune image, uh, find saturation and whip that up a bit. 
like that and then go into the uh, the brightness and reduce that a bit this gives us a punchier image to start with so we'll accept that and now go into black and white and the, as you can see again we've got a number of filters if we look at the neutral one to start with that's a reasonable monochrome image but things get better if we click on this we get the filters that we would normally use when we're taking pictures of black and white so we've got a red filter orange yellow green certainly wouldn't try blue that's horrible let's just have a look at the green one for a minute uh, I quite like that but we'll just try the yellow one now I prefer that very very punchy image um, right so therefore we will accept that and now you can see we've actually made quite a nice black and white conversion before starting to edit this final image I want to say a word or two about saving your work after you've finished and this is where it gets a little complicated if you are using Android and you open from Google Photos or from Gallery then when you finish doing your editing you click here on done and it just saves a copy um, to uh, to Google Photos or to Gallery you can go into settings here and determine uh, the size of the image that you save um, I've obviously got it set to uh, do not resize but you can set it for a variety of uh, sizes and to the format and quality JPEG 100% however if you're using an iPhone or you open a picture directly from Snapseed the layout is a little different I've opened this direct from Snapseed and if we look at the bottom we will see export so there's no done up there and we have export down here and if we click on export we can either share it direct to social media uh, save a copy which is similar to what happens when you hit done uh, if you open from Google Photos you could export it uh, saving changes uh, which in a iPhone could, can then be altered or export as and then you can make a few decisions about where you put it etc so that, that's just a, a bit of a difference which could cause some confusion so we're going to have a little look at this now what we'll hope to do with this is to turn it into a monochrome image apart from the uh, phone box which I will leave as red we have a little look at tune image to start with we'll have a look at ambience and if we increase that a bit you can see it sort of increases the clarity and the saturation to some extent and we'll uh, I think we'll just also adjust the saturation a little bit as well make it nice and punchy that'll do nicely so we'll accept that now we go into tools again and into black and white very much like we did with the uh, earlier image click on our filters what's best you think red oh that's quite good isn't it and if we're going to bring the red back in that red seems an appropriate one so we'll accept that okay now comes the clever bit up here we can click on that this is called the stacks brush and we can see our edits view edits and these are the different things that we've done to the image black and white tune image original if we click on black and white we've got these here which means we can really go back to the start with this and, and, and redo it or we can dump the whole thing think of it like a layer or we can go into this and think of that a little bit like a sort of I 
I don't know, layer mask? I'm not sure. At the moment it seems to have got rid of what we've just done, but if I click down here it brings it all back again. And if you look down here we see it says black and white and it says zero. And if we click up it goes black and white 100. So if we come back down to zero and now we'll sort of zoom in on that telephone box so we can see a bit clearer. If you notice the brush size never changes but as you zoom in it becomes relatively smaller. So now we will click on the on the box and we can take away all the black and white conversion. This is tricky enough to do with your finger on the phone. Doing it with a mouse is even more tricky. We'll, we'll let the grass come back a little bit as well. How about that? Now you can see where we've gone over the edges here. If we change this back down, to, or back up I should say, to black and white 100, now we can come back there and just uh, paint the black and white back in. Okay. Now when we've uh, finished doing that, again we have to click to accept it. And then these are still here. We click the arrow up here, which takes us back to our basic editing. Now obviously there's an awful lot more I could do with that image and uh, I could take more time and make it uh, a little bit uh, better but all I wanted to demonstrate was the power of this, uh, this little button up here which you could easily miss. So this is the end of the video, I hope you've enjoyed it. We've looked at changing the tones in an image, changing the perspective, cropping the image, using double exposure, conversions to mono, and this little stacks brush which enables you to go back in the, into the history and make selective adjustments. So I hope you found it helpful and I hope you've enjoyed it and uh, thank you very much for listening.